Hello, my name is Stephanie Davis and I'm the Managing Director of Pembroke Software. I'm here today to show you a couple of reasons why I've chosen Sage 50 for our internal systems. Just a couple of very simple reasons and um, headlines as I would see them. So what we've got is we've got our multiple modules down the left hand side, as you'd expect, you've got a number of customers with various pieces of information going over on the top of the menu structure there. So if I have a look here, I'm just going to jump into invoicing. We do have quotes and sales orders. And I got a number of sales orders and invoices here. So I can set them up very quickly. I could, what I've done earlier for the purpose of the demonstration, I can duplicate an invoice if I made a slight mistake, want to change the, the, the date on it, if I wish to change the amount on it, and click on save. Um, if I wish to update these invoices, I can select um, one or many and I can quickly click on the update and I can find those by date. Quickly, there they are updated. So if I go back over to my customers, I should have more balances now. I can pop into something like my reports. I have two favourite age debtors reports here, but you'll see under the age debtors, you've got a number of um, available reports to you. If I run a summary one here, click on the preview, I can run it for any number of customers and I can run it up to a date, include future transactions or exclude payments. So you'll see here, nice, concise, easy to read age debtors report. But I can also have a detailed one. So that will give me the details of all the invoices behind each of those balances that you saw in the summary. You will see here I can print it, email, export it. So there's many ways to get the data back out again. So if I was popping in here and having a look at my bank and I will come in here to do primarily some, uh, some transactions that I want to um, have a look at. And one of those could be your bank transferring between maybe your petty cash and your current account supplier payments, etc. But as you'd expect all those transactions to be types up there. So I'm gonna click on reconcile. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick up my bank statement and I'm going to pop in my bank balance. So my bank balance on my bank statement says minus 180. I can put a date in that into what I want to actually run up to. So let's say I'm going to say, I want to include everything up to the 31st of March, even though I'm going to do my bank reconciliation up maybe up to the 28th of February, but I want to see if anything's been misposted. So what I'll do is I'll find my transactions here that I can tick off my bank statement and I can match them. I can do one or I can do many. Okay, if I had put the date of the 28th of February, so you can see that this transaction is the 1st of March, but it's not something I'm needing. So if I put it onto the 28th of February, you will see it disappears. It's only showing me what's available there to match up to the 28th. Now, I've got a difference down here of €2.60. So what I could do is I could save my reconciliation. I could pop out to the uh, bank payment. And I could put the bank payment in as I see fit. Or I could have stayed in the bank reconciliation. Now, the great thing is because I clicked save, I can use my saved. I don't have to start again. But if I'd stayed in here, I've got the bank payment in here. And it's exactly the same as what I had when I popped out of the bank reconciliation. So I'm going to put in for the 28th of February. I'm going to do bank charges. And I can look up my bank charges here, I'm going to pop down to the B's and I can see that if I'd known the normal code off by heart, I could have just typed it in. So I'm just going to pop in my bank charges. If I was maintaining departments and projects and cost centers, I could have allocated to there. It's going to be two euros 60 and there's no VAT on that. So if I save it here, now the difference about popping this in while I'm in the bank reconciliation it automatically knows that I want it to be included. So you can see now that my bank difference has gone down to zero, which means now I'm in a position to reconcile. Once I've reconciled, that is it. Everything is up to date as it stands. So the last thing again I want to show you is a VAT return. So you can see here, I've never run a VAT return. So if I pop into a VAT return, I can run this for as far back as I need to. 
So I can pop the dates back here and I can run it from Jan January to April and I can calculate my VAT and it's telling me that there are 11 transactions found for this. OK, so I can see here what my VAT return should be. But I can also see a warning sign up here. So if I view the results up here, I can have a look and these validations can be set up in the background. Four invoices have not been updated. So I can see that if I'm running it from January to April or January to March, these must be included. So I can pop back out again and I can have a look and I can go back to my invoices where we were earlier. I could sort by date and say, right, what I wanted, I can sort by posted. I'm going to see that I have, these are unposted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update them to the ledgers. They're all done, they're all fine. Close it off here. I'm going to pop back to my VAT return and start again. So I'm going to take on my January to April. I can see there's 15 transactions now and it's been updated. I've still got one query one sales or tax transaction not using your most commonly. So again, if, I, if I've picked an odd tax, I can have a tax code on it, I can have a look at it. I'm quite happy that that was T0. So I can come out of there and I can click to reconcile my VAT. Now, the most important thing here is you've got all your information and you're going to run your transactions directly from the VAT return. You don't need to pop out and post your journal in and out of your tax in, tax out. So I can post that with then the date on it. I don't have a connection for the demonstration purposes onto the online, but I can mark it as being submitted on the revenue site. And then I pick my bank account and I pick the date that it's going to come out for. So let's say I'm going to pick the 30th of the 4th, keep consistent. It's defaulting me with my VAT registration number and it knows the amount that I'm due to pay. So I can post that bank amount. So all my tick boxes are there and I can close it off. So now I can see I have my first VAT return on my list. If I do need to go back to it, I can go back into the VAT return and you can see here, the information is already there. You can see the 698 and you can have a look. You can also drill down into the information from the uh, VAT return that you've already got. And if you double click all the way through, there's my supplier piece of information. And as I'd expect my sales. The other item there is just to show you uh, in relation to, I'm going to show it in relation to an invoice format, but you can um, format and design any of your reports or your invoice layouts, or your purchase order layouts within Sage 50. And once you've training on it, so I've got one here, as I say, as I prepared earlier. So I'm just going to preview this. So you can see here, in here, you can see a format. But once I edit this, I can have a look and I could have populated. So it took me about five minutes to put a couple of boxes, a logo, et cetera, around that. So when I do run my, um, run my invoices, here's my invoice that come, comes out. So I can run my invoice with my own format. I can do a quick print. Uh, I can run one or many, and I can also email if I wish to, if I've email set up in the background. There's a couple of reasons why I've chosen Sage 50 for Pimbrook software. Thank you.